I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Jenny David. Here. Roger Mayhew. Yes. Charles Wilsey. Here. Brenda Simmons. Here. Frank Scott. Here. Any additions or corrections to the agenda, commissioners? I have one. I don't think I have any either. Item three, public comment. Any public comment on the room? Public comment on the phone? Item four, appointments, Ogma Hills Recreation Complex. Mike, is that you? Yeah, I'm representing the township for it. Come on up. Oh, Thanks for coming. I have three notes. I can't remember everything. You're good. No. You're good. So, Tim, would you like to start off with this? I just uh, review what you've got uh, in front of you. You've got the letter from the township dated uh, December 13th. And it's the letter they sent about uh, their proposal on uh, uh, property itself. The township did send the next set of data, which is the surveys that they have. And uh, there was one minor change that really doesn't impact a great deal on the, the one that uh, is labeled on the left margin. It said ball fields and disc golf. Um, the equalization showed me yesterday there's a little bit more land that's part of that uh, parcel than is shown on this survey. It's not really material to what you want to talk about today, but uh, we'll um, get an updated uh, survey if, if you need it. And then finally, the next page is that survey of county properties that we did. It probably was a year and a half ago. And toward the bottom of that first page, you see the Ogemaw Hills Recreation Complex. And this is what Commissioner Simmons had pointed out. Uh, back in August of 24, the board paid $75,000 for the property. We do uh, recognize the 99-year lease that goes through April 11th of 2118, which is you know, quite a ways out right now. There was one minor change that was made. The equalization brought to our attention the actual acreage that was shown on the data that they had in their office was inaccurate. The actual acreage is 46.71 acres, and so that, that's the only change from a year and a half ago. So that's just the summary of material, uh, and I'm sure uh, you can review your uh, letter that you presented to the board and answer any questions. I just yeah. had a quick question. I'm sorry. I don't have a copy of that, but I'm sorry, the letter, but. Tim, where's that seven on this property that's listed? Where Where are you talking about? I'm looking at it. I looked at it last night. Where Where are you talking where it shows that we paid 75 grand for that? All right, so on the far uh, right column, yep. you'll see the 75,000. And Which one's the properties? I'm looking at. To make sure that you have the the spreadsheet. Yeah. All right. So it's toward the bottom. It's one, two, three. The fourth property up. It says Okemal Hills Recreation Complex. All right there, August fourth, nineteen ninety four. Right. See, I was when when we were talking about this. I thought this land was donated to us. No. Yeah, not this one. <laughs> Obviously. Um, yeah. Go ahead, sir. Oh, I didn't have the letter, but I can answer questions. I'll do my best. No, so, I, read, I read the letter. Um, I, I'm here to answer questions, or but I can I can comment from the rec board, being on the rec, rec facility board, that um, we have no money to put into that. You know, they have, we have hardly anything. We have to depend on the county to help us. Um, and uh, DDA last year, West Branch DDA gave us money to build a new shed that needed to be built for the elect electrical everything. And um, we had a uh, volunteer, Jim Lucas, did it himself and built it, so it didn't cost us any extra on that. But um, uh, some of the issues out there I can address, like, for example, the uh, press box. Um, upstairs, the windows aren't tight. And so the rain and snow has been coming in for years. And so all the uh, 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 facing or whatever you want to call it, where we do all the writing for all the, and broadcast and everything, the, that, that all that's going to have to be replaced. And I don't know how deep down 
the rotting issue would go if we got to replace the whole thing. And then there's disc golf. There's so many different things that need to be fixed on the disc golf. I mean, um, um, were you uh, mentioning the 75,000 as wanting us to pay that? Is no. that what you're asking? No. Okay. Because I would, uh, the reason I ask that is I would dare say with Jeremy and I looking everything over that we're probably looking at that amount just to get everything brought back up to where we're at, if not more <clears throat> out there. The problem is, is there's so much to be done. And the only reason we were asking for it is to help the county out. We have the means and we have the time to do it. And that's the reason why we offered to take it. I mean, I mean, we can put our resources other places. We have other projects to do, but I just have been commenting on it at our meetings because being a representative of Little League plus on the rec board, what I'm seeing out there that needs to be fixed and we need to get on it now. I mean, there's even a need for a new scoreboard because the wiring's gone. But you guys currently lease it, right? And are able um, to do pretty much. No, no, no. We don't know that we have any control at it. But yeah, there's a lease. You guys lease yeah, it. We have no idea that we had any rec control board. of it. The rec board. The rec lease. board, but we don't have any money. So we would have to look, either ask the DDA or the county. The county to. Like for a grant. I mean, I realize where you guys are financially. I realize where you're at financially. But I can just tell you straight up, if you don't want us to do it, you're going to have to find the money and get on it this year. Because every year that it goes, that's thousands more dollars that are going to have to be put into the thing. Well, you guys are currently leasing it. Hold it. on, come here, Mr. Scott. You guys, you guys are currently leasing it. Have, has, has anybody looked into grants or applied for any grants to, to update or maintain that? If we know we have it, we would do that. Have what? Because if we know, if the township knows that we are that's ours and the county's you know hands off let us do it take care of it yeah we're gonna we we can do all that stuff right now as a rec board we have to ask you to write the grants for us no you don't it says no, you don't. Yeah. Hold, no, on, you don't. hold on guys it says a 99 year lease then then we'll get to that 99 year lease to west branch township for use of Ogma hills recreational complex um, so do we have it then i mean everybody at our board as far as we know we don't have it tim would you like to does. tim Mr. Scott, hold on. Just one at a time. Tim, sorry, I sorry, I apologize. Tim, can you go ahead? Well, yeah, it's um, it was leased for a dollar for that hundred years. Um, I cannot, <laughs> frankly, think of a reason why you can't do those things. Now, if you're um, concerned that you know you don't want to do things without the board knowing what you're doing, that's fine. You know, bring yeah. Well, in and we're, update we're, the I guess the concern that I I heard from uh, the rest of the people were. What if we put all that money in and everything, and then the county says that's ours? We're taking that. You don't, you know. We want to make sure if we're putting the money into it that. Am I making sense at all? Am I well, the only sense? time we're going to take it back is twenty one eighteen. Okay. See, I didn't know. Sorry. We don't know that. We don't. We can't find anything to tell us that Hold we on. have this. I'm You're sorry. No, I apologize. Don't we don't just don't sorry. know that we have this. I, I guess. <laughs> I could be and we too. didn't know. You know, this is very frightening. I should very frightening, especially when we have people that I thought should have this information. Um, that we paid seventy five thousand dollars for this when we were talking about turning it over, um, not that long ago, nineteen ninety four. Yeah. Um. We were unaware of that until Commissioner Simmons brought it to us last week, um, which is very poor management on my end that we're aware, not aware of this. Are you aware, too, that the soccer fields on Clear Lake Road are also part of the uh, Ogemaw Recreation Complex? We, we have a list of all the properties. Yeah, I just our, didn't know if you knew that. I, I didn't find that out until three years ago. I registered beads brought to us. <laughs> Commissioner Simmons. Sorry, Brad. Yeah, um, just like the uh, RV parks leased to us. And we write grants, and we put money into it. So what's to say that in whatever is it, 19, 20, 91 or whatever it is, you just don't take it back. Same same deal. We write grants and put money into it, and we keep it fixed up. We don't come to the West Branch Township and ask for money to keep that park up. Yeah, well, um, and, and um, that's what I see, and that's another, that's a whole different subject. But we, you know, the way they confused us there too. They told us that we we had so we had that. Um, 
<laughs> that part too. So, but I don't care about that right now. I'm just concerned about That's the. Uh, Mr. Scott, did you have something? Well, it is. We, all, we were all aware of a 99 year lease. This isn't anything new. And a lease means that you're pretty much, you're leasing it. We don't have any control over it. You're leasing it. If I lease a piece of property to somebody, I don't have control over it. It's in the lease, whatever the lease is. <clears throat> do we have a copy of the lease? So. Tim, do you have a copy of the lease? Yeah, I don't remember ever seeing one, but I've got quite a file on all these properties. I'm not yeah. seeing this. I don't either. I'm sorry. I can't answer that question yeah. either. In the information packet that I gave you many months ago, years ago, the lease was in there. Also, the, the one parcel that was given to us by... Um, when Bader bought that 75 foot by 422 foot was not in your um, parcels that are owned by Oklahoma County. The one on Fairview Road? No, no all same. Right there. It's right. part of the parking lot. Driveway. Um, no, it's beyond the driveway. It's part of the parking lot. And when they sold it to Bader, they, um, found out there was an issue, but I do. Here's the lease. When when was that wrote up? When... You want this done? This lease- Sounds like he has a copy. Was um, dated in September of 2017, but the original lease was in 94. It was not recorded because it was not made a recordable copy. Speaking of which, I have the original lease for the RV park in my files because it's not a recordable document either. And we should get it recorded by an affidavit so that lease is up record. So do you guys have a copy of this lease? Um, I do, honestly don't know without asking Jeremy or Clark, but he didn't comment about it. He told me everything he had, and um, uh, he said he'd heard something about it too. But that's the confusion. It's the whole thing. Sorry if I'm holding the up on the meeting, but I want to get it straightened this out. Is part of our, this is a part of our so meeting. So that we can get right on it, because we'd like to start the spring on stuff. And this has been being talked about now for well over a year. And, and again, unfortunately, some of this information was not brought to us um, as it should have been. Well, this was signed by Steve Steinhauser. So that oh, that's how long it is. That's like uh, three or four well, I, uh, supervisors ago, is, I think oh, it yeah. is, isn't it? Yeah. Commissioner Scott? Yeah. In July, I, I stopped paying my taxes at the township, and they asked me then to look into what where we at. I went back to talk to you guys and told you this is not high on the county's radar. We're not in. We're not looking to sell it. We're not looking to do this. We're not looking to do anything right now. You guys, you guys look up all the stuff. You guys come up with all the material. That's what I said. This is not high on our radar. We don't want to spend the time goofing around trying to research all this stuff. I ask you guys to do it. So, and, and you keep throwing the ball back at us all the time. Now, I have I wasn't here when they built Field of Dreams there, but I'll bet that nobody came and asked the county board if they could build a scoreboard, or I'll bet they didn't ask to build anything there. You guys just build a shed. Nobody came to us and said, hey, we're building a shed out there last year. I was here last year. So why is it all of a sudden now there's this thing that we got to know if we can do this or not? Well, you went ahead and built. built. That was the record. Uh, well, yeah, not the town. Well, that's who's leasing. To clarify Mike, that. that's who's yeah. leasing this. It's not the record, not the township. Okay? The township has nothing to do with this, except that they want something to do with it. The lease is with the township, not the rent. Oh, it is with the it's township. With the well, there you go. Okay, so, so you already got the lease. Now, if there's a lease from the township to the rec board. Okay. That's so, not something I Okay, know. that's something I check. So I guess um, we have our meeting next week, so I can take it back to our board. Um, <laughs> there wouldn't be any problem then if, do we need to have something in writing or something that we're okay to just jump on and do, or is that good enough right there? It's this right here. Okay, that's good enough. So the township 
could go ahead because all this we're trying to do is stop things from getting worse. <clears throat> That's fair. Denise, I'm complaining as a little league representative about it. Denise, how long <laughs> have you had that folder? Um, when we started doing, when I prepared everything so that you knew what all the county properties were, I made a folder for the ones that continually came up. Which was one a year ago? Probably a year or more. Yeah. Whenever I get started dealing with the uh, high bags. Yeah. Correct. So that's been over a year ago. Yeah. yeah. And copies of all the deeds, all the documents and everything that I had prepared, I gave to Tim, mm -hmm. which he scanned in and did this. But again, I guess my, my, I mean, we, we were next to giving this property away to the township. Um, we already got it. <laughs> Well, it wasn't, sorry, it wasn't I, done. I, I got to plead we ignorance. Were, I didn't know. No, that's okay. I, I guess the frightening stuff, the frightening thing to me, as far as a commissioner, is that we were next to giving this this fifty four acres away um, to the township, not knowing or not aware that we had paid a substantial amount of money for this. And I thought not that all that long because ago. that information had been given. Well, now, just a minute. Let's put this in context. This conversation started when we were looking at the umbrella insurance and the properties we were insuring. And the board said, well, some of these properties we don't even use. Why do we even have them? That's where that conversation started. When we were dealing with the high banks, this spreadsheet that you have in front of you, uh, was put together, and as you can see, includes the Ogama Recreation Complex and includes that purchase price. So to claim that we didn't know, well, okay, I haven't internalized every number that you see on this spreadsheet, but the fact is we did have that in front of us. The conversation was concerned about liability when it came to our umbrella policies. I, I, I'm going to disagree with you because uh, Ms. Commis previous Commissioner Newbecker was really, really, really involved in this conversation because of him sitting on the DDA and because of people that had came to him. Um, and again, I think we had placed people in position so that we get all the information so that we can make educated decisions. Um, I, I, I wasn't aware until last week that we paid a substantial amount of money for this. And I think that's information that when this property was brought up should have been investigated um, and very well known. Well, again, it's it's in front of you and all of our properties with all of the purchase prices are in front of you. Um, and So shame on me for not seeing that, but also shame on our management for not bringing that to us. Can I ask a question? Please. Did, they, did the county pay for that prop that Strip of property from Beta Brothers when no, okay, that's all. That's all. Uh, I have a question. Go ahead. The, the spreadsheet that's given us here, the four A three, um, on all the properties, is this a spreadsheet that's given to the commissioners every year? Um, no. Excuse me. No. This information on the sale of this is this something that's is this new or no this was created when we were first talking about the high banks and the questions about the same time we were questioning about the insurance and what we were paying for and concerns were expressed about liability so this spreadsheet was put together then it might be in that new commissioner packet that we gave you it had a lot of information in it it might be part of the capital improvements component to that but um unless somebody asked for it i don't know to necessarily reproduce this and send it out No, before that, there was no spreadsheet. There was no, there was no other phone to talk to Denise in the office and research everything. There wasn't. I, I'm glad you came forward and put together all the properties that the county owned. And if you go into we Jim's office, didn't have any idea? I have section maps of all the properties, and I have them highlighted so you can see exactly where they're at. So this is the first time you guys have seen this information as in what we paid back in 94. You haven't you guys no, didn't miss it. You just have never seen it before. Um I, I'm gonna disagree. I, I believe it was it was presented just like it is here. Um but again, it's it's I just had trouble and I looked at it pretty closely last night, seeing that 75 grand and knowing exactly what I'm looking at. I'm I'm no expert at sections and I don't know half of these areas. So do we individualize these? 
I mean, I, I don't believe so. I mean, we sectioned what we owned and we were surprised by by some of these, even over in Mills, we own that, uh, um, what is it called, that building there. Anyways, um, I, again, I, we we did, I don't believe we talked about individual properties and sections and breaking this down specifically, but this was presented to us. Um, nobody caught that we paid $75,000 for, for that. Um, I thought it was donated to us by uh, somebody because I actually had a recent conversation with a previous commissioner that thought the same thing. It was donated to us or the DNR were involved or, or something. I, I don't recall the exact conversation. Okay. I just got one more thing to say. Go ahead. Um, so I think Brenda brought up a real good comment about, you know, how kind of vice versa, you know, that we're putting money into the RV park. You know, we have a lease, the lease with you guys, and it is through the township. You know, I think it's really important at this point in time that all these question marks get answered so we can make solid decisions and conversations and not this, oh, I didn't know this. Oh, I'm not aware of this. You no, know, this is the time now we have to make sure we all are on the same page. Um, you know, I've, I've been very clear with, you know, it's a beautiful asset there. I appreciate what you guys are doing. But, I mean, you guys have control of it and all the way up to what's the year? 2180. Yeah, well, 90 some years. Right, so, right. so we're what I'm hearing is is we're good to go. We can just go ahead and start fixing some things. I up look up over there. the lease and make sure legally wise you guys agree with it and, and all of that is information. Take that back to your township and look it over. And I mean it should all be pretty well spelled out. Okay. I'm sorry that there's the confusion, but most of us are new in there and we're trying to figure this out. I mean, they said to pee on the answer the question sorry <laughs> well, well first off mike you're on the transit board with me and you're not a peon you bring in a lot of good questions and and you're an asset to that but it's just like i said the bottom line is is now we have to be on the same page and there should be no more questions we support the fact i mean i know i support the fact of what you guys are doing there um and i think like commissioner david said you know take a good look at that lease again um, but I would say I don't see any issues at all. Why not? You guys can't continue to move forward. I mean, it's, it's, okay. it's your guys's, you know, through the, the lease. There should be a lot of grant. There should be something. They said there was a lot of confusion too when um, Margaret Winslow left because uh, meetings were. I was on the rec board. Meetings were at the West Branch Township, then all of a sudden they went to Oldemont Township, and uh, they and. <clears throat> So there was a lot of confusion among us on the rec board as to what we could do and couldn't do. And so and now we don't have to, now that the rec board and the township, we don't have to dissolve the rec board, do we? And start, we're, we're, we're good. No, you need to see if there's a lease, lease between the right. township and the rec board. Okay. Some type of agreement, legal and agreement. He said he has lots of files, but he doesn't know where the stuff is. Yeah, there's some um, um, case in point. I'm trying to take care of the cemetery out on Campbell Road for the township, and it's a mess. So um, I understand that. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. I apologize. I wouldn't spend your time, but I'm sure glad that this we is found this out. Did, that we needed this. So this is I a waste of time. Can I get a copy this is one yeah. we can transfer. We can check off of our list. Thank you. That well, that makes it easy for us to. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Denise. Thanks, Mike. Input. Thanks, Denise. Here you go. Oh, thank you very much. You're welcome. Discussion item 5A, 2024 meeting schedule. Do you want Jeremy to email you? Whatever he finds out. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Got it. I will do that. I see there's a draft. There's too. a draft uh, calendar. This is the. It's just a... Uh, continuation of our current schedules as far as the first, second, third, and fourth uh, Thursdays are concerned. It maintains the 9 o'clock, 530, um, back and forth. Also, uh, what you've got highlighted on here with the uh, various colors and, and underlines and everything are all the meeting dates and deadlines that have to be moved because of holidays or because of some statutory requirement. Uh, for instance, the uh, April 9th meeting or it would be uh, Tuesday because we're required to have that meeting on the Tuesday immediately prior to the regularly scheduled. Well, the, it has to be the Tuesday following the second Monday of April. So that one's going to be a little off. Uh, July 2nd is off because uh, your Thursday meeting would have been July 4th. And the rule in the board rules, if that happens, then we move that meeting to a Tuesday. 
those are the only meetings that are changed, but you can see that as far as the uh, deadlines for departments to get materials to you, they get shifted quite a bit because of Monday holidays. Uh, but that's more for uh, you know, departments who have things to get on the agenda. But anyway, this is just a continuation of uh, what we've done. There is no magic to this. If you want to change any of the dates, that's completely within your uh, authority to do uh, dates, times, days of the week, whatever. Uh, so this is just uh, you know, the, the continuation, but it's not cast in stone. What's your guys' thoughts, Commissioner Simmons? Why, why, why are we having one of the meetings on June 28th instead of June 27th? This is June 27th. This is June 27th. Yes, yeah, 27th. That's a Thursday. I know, but why did you schedule it for the 28th? And it says the 27th on mine. Well, on this thing that I'm looking at here, it says the 28th. June 28th. Oh, never that's mind. The deadline. That's a deadline. Never mind. <laughs> Got it. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. I'm glad I didn't change my calendar. Questions, comment, Commissioner? Are you okay with this, Commissioner Mayhew? Yeah. Well, I, well, I'd like the all evening meetings, but it's just me. I make them somehow. Yeah, that works best for me as well. But Commissioner uh, Scott? Well, I don't have a problem with this. Commissioner Waltzie? No, I'm fine. I'm good. So do we need we don't need a resolution or anything for this, do we? You will. I mean, uh, for me too. <laughs> I know. We'll move out. You do have to adopt it, so that would be on the agenda next week to do. Okay. Um, Go ahead, Commissioner Scott. You know, we're not we're not bound to have daytime meetings by any law. There's no law that says we have to have that. You can have it any time of the day you want. That's up to the majority of the board. But just to explain, I think why we do do the daytime is because we'd be asking employees to come to night meetings after work, and in some cases we'd be paying overtime to come to the meeting. I just know that you know, we look out here, and we have the same people. No matter morning or night. Oh yeah, that's. I mean, the people of care will be here. It don't matter if it's morning or night; they will show up. Right. Or or now we have access in other yeah, manners. Watch it. Sure. I, evenings work best for me too. I, I don't really see a difference in daytime or nighttime participation. Um, I guess it depends on the subject matter and what's going on. But I think we they when I first started, were they all evening? I don't remember. No. 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 Okay. There were. Were, were we doing four when you? No, we're no. Doing three. One committee of the whole, yes, and then two meetings, yeah. So we picked up a whole new, and that's continued now for quite a quite a. And that time. was in the other room too, in the gallery. Yeah. Let's not go back there. <laughs> <laughs> Item V twenty twenty four Board of Commissioners Standing Committees. I think we have all of this information on our heads. I see. Uh, there needs to be a correction for the. Yep. For the county, um, the one that I took over for Brenda. Yep. Which one is that? Uh, that is... Standing committee or... Uh, uh, liaison. Liaison committee. Uh, right here. Uh, the Michigan Association of Counties. In liaison county. In under, liaison under committees. Liaison committees. <laughs> I guess um, we kept this the same for for uh, commissioners two year terms, but we have talked about changing um, in January. Uh, what's your guys' thoughts on uh, changing, continuing? Um, I personally would like to continue with what we're doing at this point in time, but maybe next time when there's a four year term, you know, after two years changing, that'll be up to the board members at that point in time. But 
What's your guys' thoughts? I mean, it is nice to know a little bit about everything, um, but I think that the commissioners who've been attending the meetings bring a pretty good report back to all of us. Yeah. Well, I, I don't have a problem keeping the same. Yeah, on standing committees, of course, claims and account is up front. I don't mind volunteering for the first quarter. I just did it for the last. So I'll keep doing the first if, if that'll work. Where's that one at? So I'll do it. That's right on, right on top. I, I, I'd want to for first and fourth. Oh, we don't have. What's your, what's your thoughts, Commissioner Walsey? Yeah, I'd like to stay the way it is. I mean, you know, now being in here for a year, I'm kind of starting to get a little bit of traction with some of the boards and stuff I'm on, and I, I think it's good that we, we stay course. Um, are, are, so are we basically right now saying what we're asking to, for the claims and account? Two, two separate things. I think right now I, I was looking for your opinion as far as standing committees. Are you guys okay continuing your committees that you're on? Yeah. Okay. Because again, we had talked about changing, um, but I, I think with only two year term at this point in time, now claims uh, and accounts, Commissioner Scott, you want to do January, February, March, the first quarter? I'll volunteer to do for first and fourth quarter. Okay. Any other volunteers? Council first. Um, third. Third for me, please, if that's possible. Third for Commissioner Wilsey. I'll do second. Go ahead, put me down. It's easier. You call to make sure I make it. You want to do second with me? Yeah. We'll do it together April and May. I do because I do evenings. It's the only thing that's so we're missing uh nope, that's it. We got it then. You got two for third quarter. Oh no. Who volunteered for third? Um Commissioner Wolfie. Commissioner Simmons, what did you do? First and fourth. I can do first and fourth, I guess. Is that what you said? I'm sorry. No, I didn't say that. Okay, I said I'd do see. first. Pick either third or fourth, and I'll do the other one. I'll do fourth. I'll do, ooh, I'll do second and third. Lucky. So I do Brent. I, I do Brenda. <laughs> I, I do uh, first and fourth. Yes, with Commissioner Scott. No. Okay. We well, I should. So who's going to do the uh, the other quarters? We have Commissioner Scott. We have it covered. Who's doing it? Um, I'm doing second and third. Commissioner Mayhew is doing second, and Commissioner Wilson is doing third. Did you follow that? Oh, I followed. <laughs> We're good then. Uh, 2024 board member. Oh, we were talking about the liaisons. You guys are okay with that? Yeah, When's Mayhew go? We kind of covered, huh? When does Mayhew go? Uh, he goes second with me. And Wilsey goes third. third. With you? Yes. Good. Do you guys are good with that? I'm good with it. Yeah, just that one correction. Calendar year 2024 activities. Uh, this I just want to review with you uh, the rather full plate that you've got already uh, moving forward. We do the jail medical services RFP, but I should do next Friday. You'll see those proposals um, at your uh, committee, the whole meeting in two weeks. That's where we'll formally open them at the table. Uh, and then uh, you'll uh, have a discussion there to determine if you want to hear directly from the vendors, if yes, uh, they've already been uh, put on notice through the RFP that the February 1 committee, the whole meeting, would be the meeting where they would come and make their presentation. Uh, we still have two active uh, uh, vendors who've come through, done their tours, asked questions, and so on. I do have a letter from a third vendor uh, stating that they would like to participate and they would like to remain on our list, but currently they have more work than they can handle. They won't be bidding on this uh, particular round. That company's out of Pennsylvania, and I'm not sure that they've been in Michigan before anyway, but uh, nevertheless, the interest is there, and so you may want to hold that uh, February 1 uh, commitment, uh, have them come in and make their presentations. You can ask questions directly of them uh, at that time. 
Uh, we do still have the non-union employee manual that we, we really need to get that out. Uh, and it would be very good if we could do that in the first quarter. Uh, something I don't have official notice on yet concerning the new material management plans that the state is going to require of us. And I understand that there was a letter that went out from the DNR. It was supposed to arrive this week. I haven't seen it yet. But what it's telling us is that we will have 180 days or roughly till about July 6th to inform the state whether we're going to create our own plan or if we're going to join uh, with a group of counties. I've been approached already by uh, Isabella County, who's trying to form a 12 county consortium uh, with Isabella County serving as the primary um, um, processing facility uh, for recyclables. So we would have to talk to them about how that would work for, for uh, Ogemaw County. Would there be vehicles coming up here doing curbside programs? Would there be drop-offs? How would they get to Mount Pleasant? And so on. Um, they, uh, in Isabella, are serious enough, they actually received a $900,000 grant from the DNR to upgrade the facilities they have to modernize it. And they really will need the volume coming through there to make that economically viable. So they would very much like to see us involved. I've also had uh, contact from a private vendor uh, who is trying to start up his own facility someplace between here and Bay City. I'm not quite clear on where that was. So that uh, will likely become uh, more uh, front and center for us as the months uh, go on here early. Now, the state right now has originally or is initially um, planning to provide $60,000 annually to write the plan. They think it's going to take about a three-year uh, cycle to write all the plans. So every county would receive that if we are part of a regional planning group, an additional 10,000 per county uh, would be added to that. I have to give them the resources we have to put into this. Um, we, in fact, that, that I doubt that we're going to be ever viable to have our own processing facility or anything that would uh, come close to, to breaking even in Ogama. We likely are going to have to join with another county. But more on that as, as these regions begin to materialize. And I think that's going to start to accelerate here in the next few months because there's a lot of work that's got to go into the material or the documents that we send to the state. Uh, there's also counties will receive an additional five cents per capita up to 300,000 over the first three years. So there's significant dollars the state's putting into this. So I think that's also going to be generating some other interest from other uh, some resources we haven't heard from yet. In March, we'll get the audit report as we normally do. Uh, those commissioners who are interested, the legislative conference with MAC is April 29th through May 1st in Lansing. Uh, June, just to keep on your radar, the DNN pretrial conference is scheduled for June 10th, and the trial in that case is scheduled for June 25th. That is uh, something that I would likely be required to attend, uh, not only by our attorneys, but by our insurance carrier as well. Uh, I, you know, typically, it's a June through September schedule, but with our budget committee, we may uh, uh, start this up earlier, but June to September is our typical period for doing the annual budget uh, for the 2025 budget. Uh, probably uh, the more sig most significant thing that we've got coming up this year is collective bargaining with our five bargaining units. Uh, I will be inviting our county attorneys up for uh, a session with you uh, probably mid-spring uh, just to go over the basics of bargaining, what your responsibilities are, uh, how the process works, uh, the attorney that uh, did the presentation at MAC this year, Bonnie Tasky, did an excellent program, uh, provided uh, not only some strategic ideas, but also updates on legislation. And there's been quite a few uh, over the last legislative year that will impact where we are, where our position is uh, when it comes to bargaining. In August, we will issue the RFP for the liability insurance. Might do that in July, just to give us the extra time, uh, as I've learned uh, the last time we did this, the insurance agencies like a lot of reports from their current carrier about experience the county has had with accidents, with uh, uh, risk uh, uh, claims, and so on. Uh, but that's a, 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 an agreement that we had this past time was a three-year agreement. So this is a pretty big deal for us just in terms of getting all our insurances in line. Then the MAX annual conference is in Grand Rapids this year at the end of September. Two other items that I really can't put dates on just yet on where things are going to be, but the Opioid Settlement Committee, uh, I believe there will be an action plan that will come out of that committee at some point this year. 
Uh, we are at the beginning stages of that, and I think that's going to begin to uh, speed up a little as well. And we did just set up our housing advisory committee. Um, we had a lot of uh, uh, information really through uh, Penny at EDC about a number of housing grants and housing uh, initiatives that are going on in the region. So this could become a fairly active committee as well. I kind of hope it is because it's a big need in the county. And it's going to be nice to have a central group to help funnel some of that through. So that's what's on the radar right now. And of course, we have our regular um, you know, work that, that goes on on top of this, but that's um, you know, a pretty full schedule already. I don't know if there are any other things that the board wanted us to really put a focus on this year. Commissioners, Commissioner Simmons? <clears throat> Commissioner Mayhew? Commissioner Scott? No, we've got a lot of stuff to do. That's Commissioner sure. Woolsey? No, I'm good. Item E, transit. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Back to committees. Uh, we've added the uh, budget committee on. Should that be a standing committee or a liaison committee? Actually, I'm sorry, I'm, I missed that one. That should be one of your standing committees. The way it's set up, it's a special standing committee of the board. Uh, you've assigned commissioners um, Simmons. Simmons and Wilsey to that. Mm -hmm. And it's been meeting, uh, is that the second Friday? That we've been yeah, yeah pretty much. That's yeah. Friday we have. Uh, I think that should be added to the list. Yes, it should. So that it's understood. So you have a meeting this upcoming Friday, correct? Friday is twelve. Twelve. Okay. Was that a nine a.m. meeting? Yes. And there will be a posting for it, a link. Yes. Okay. I forgot last thing time before. We just talked about that yesterday, didn't we? Yeah, it's definitely posted. Okay. Then there's a link for it. There will be. Um, I don't know that. Um, I had to text Tom. Signed yet, yeah, but okay. Transit fair schedule, Commissioner Wolsey. Uh, Tim, I spoke with Tim this morning to let him know. Uh, Ray really wanted to be here today to to go over these. Uh, Ray's been under the weather, so he's not going to make it here today. Um, we talked about a month ago on the transit rates. Everybody has that map in front of them. We, we had a meeting, um, our December meeting, you know, went back, told the committee, Mike, Mike Durfee here is uh, on that committee, as well as Commissioner Simmons, you know, that there had was some conversation with the board and some, some other possible ideas. And again, we looked at this and we all feel really strong that this would be a, the best first, first step to go and stay, stay with these same prices. Um, we have talked about this in depth. Uh, we're one of the last transit committees that still does the per mileage. It does cause confusion. It takes more time. I, I think it's going to be a lot easier on, on our transit riders, on our employees. Um, and again, we feel that this starting price is, is where we should be at. So really looking for the support from you guys on this so we can continue to move that forward. And then the second part of it is uh, the assistant director. Uh, we've been talking about that for, for months um, since Tim has got really involved with our meetings and assisting us. He's helped, you know, write up the description. Uh, we really feel that a, a transit um, assistant director is really important at this time. We have, we have the funds for it, uh, but we really feel that um, it will really help with the management of the transit. Um, we've seen that the board has also brought a lot of good things already when it comes to the management and getting things done, getting physical things done at the building. And so we really feel that an assistant director will really help move things forward and uh, help bring more consistency to the, the overall leadership at the transit. The fair schedule. Uh, and I know Commissioner... Scott, you had brought up some questions related to that. Did you have any or comments or what? thoughts? The transit. Oh, the of? fares. I just, I, I, I guess in the say, say I live in Lupton and I want to go to Rose City. It's a, it costs me three dollars. Is is that what that is, or is everything based on going from a zone to West Brand? That's that's what it's based on, correct? So. If you're in South Branch, it'd be $4. If you're an adult, to get 
to the blue zone. To so what if, if I live in Lupton and want to go to Rose City, how much does that cost? I, I believe that would be a dollar. So there's there's variables then. I mean a dollar fifty, excuse me. Because he's a senior, it wouldn't cost him. <laughs> no, because uh, it depends who, who it is, obviously. But if you're an adult, it'd be, I think it'd be that'd well, be a dollar fifty, right? Yeah, it would be a dollar fifty. You're staying in the be. same zone. Well, if you stay in the same, well, I read that as I I, I read that as it's I, it's three bucks. For an adult, it's three dollars, and and is that or is that a three dollar ride to West Branch, or is it a three dollar ride anywhere? Anywhere, anywhere in that zone. That's a valid question. Or you know, because not everybody's coming to West Branch. You know, some in Mills Township used to come to my office. Right. And that's a correct. It, that's a valid. Yeah, that that is that is a good question. The majority of people do go to the you know to the blue to the West Branch, but that is a good question. Um. I think Commissioner Simmons, maybe have input Tim. If you're in the zone and staying in that same zone, I would think it would be just your dollar fifty if you're an adult charge. But Mike, I would, I would, I would agree with that. That's not how I read that, though. Yeah, that's not, not how, how I so read that. How do I read? Because then you're going back to miles versus a standard rate. No, you're not going back to miles. It'd be just that. Kind of, if you're looking at a shorter just distance versus a standard. Well, you are, but you're still not going to miles. It's still a lump sum price. There's no miles. The question is, is it a lump sum from Lupton to West Branch, or is it a lump sum? Uh, I mean, I, I guess Commissioner Simmons, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I'm making this awful confusing here. You know, you could do it just like they do the, do the maps, you know, the mileage and stuff. Uh, and you can just set up a table. So if you're going from Lupton... And staying in Lupton, they have Lupton, you have Lupton, all of them are listed here, and you have them all listed here. And you go there, up. Oh. So if you, Lupton and you're going to Rose City, this is how much it is. If you're going from Lupton to West Branch, this is how much it is. If you're going to Lupton, this minute, I gotta get my map back. If you're going from Lupton to Rose City, this is how much it is. Um, and you can, they have, you know, where you have all the names here, all the names here. It's just a set price. Right, but that's not what we're looking at here, correct? That's or, not what you have there right now. Correct, but that's what I think would be nice. But, uh, yeah, we can get a little, it's, it sounds to me like it just, we just need to basically get a little more confirmation on that. But, I mean, still the concept of it is, is very simple. Correct? It, it you guys is, are just wondering if you're going... I'm just wondering if I can make it simpler. Pretty standard. And make it just it cost it cost a, it cost a two dollars to take a ride. I don't care where I go. It just costs two dollars. That's it. I've rode it and I ride it and like right now I have a truck in town that's getting repaired and and it's done. It's been done for a week and and I gotta I gotta get a ride to town so I can drive it back home. So I figured I'll just call the transit again. I've done that before. And the miles back to West Branch is kind of almost like Roger need to go to get to Rose City to, if you had, say, a truck in there getting repaired. Same thing. It's about the same amount of miles. And uh, um, to go to go from your house to Rose City, say, and and it would cost him three dollars to ride down to, to Rose City and and get a truck. It's only going to cost me a buck and a half. Figuring we're just the adult rate, not senior rate. But uh, I, 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 I think you're basing this on consumers, on the consumers, the consumers, uh, uh, what can the what can they, they what can they afford? That's I. That's where I'm getting this. This you're getting this, you're getting this. So well, because when I bring up raising the price for one zone and not an, and lowering it to another, they say, "Oh, well, those people can't afford it." Well, wait a minute. Are they poorer in in around West Branch than somebody poor in Rose City? You know, somebody's on Social Security. Do you get more because you live farther out in the county? <clears throat> 
Well, I think this is based on, again, what Commissioner Wilsey said is, is they're basing this on primarily people who are coming to the blue zone. The, um, can I add to this? In there. Go ahead. The, the majority of the riders in our entire county, no matter if they're in our pink zone and our yellow zone, the majority of the riders on a daily basis get picked up in those zones and go to the blue zone. The majority. I don't have that exact number, but yeah. I know it's over 90%. And the other thing you guys that we have to say is, and Tim, you could add to this, what is the overall revenue of the actual ridership for the for the county transit? Isn't it like around four or five percent of our actual revenue? Um it might not be that high. It <laughs> might be in the I'm just saying I don't think we should get too terribly stalled out by this. I understand your guys' questions, and I can conf you know absolutely confirm that, but I mean it's not even three percent of our revenue. Right, I, I see your point 100%, but the voters are the ones that vote for this mill, for, for the transit. And to them, a lot of the, the seniors and in, in out in these areas, they need to know exactly how much it's going to cost them. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to speak for them right now. Do I, I think that this is absolutely, but the people out in Mills Township, they want to know how much it's going to cost them to come to my office or my previous office in the back home. I just think it needs to be more, I'm, I'm thinking for them, not for us from a revenue standpoint. I mean, obviously, a dollar fifty isn't 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 uh, going four to five percent of the revenues. That's not what I'm looking at. But they need to know exactly how much that is part of their budget. No, and we understand that, and we think overall. I mean, this is obviously going to, in the long run. I mean, if we we feel that it's going to generate less money when it comes to you know our fares. Therefore, ultimately, that means that's less money that our residents have to pay for the transit. Um, again, because only 3% or so of our total revenue is, is from the transit fares. But yes, it is very important um, that we're transparent and that people know if they're in Lupton, how much it's going to cost to get to Rose City. Um, and that is a good question. Right of mills to stay in mills. I don't disagree with this, but I think it needs to be broke down even further for riders to have a better understanding yeah. and for drivers to know what to charge. I mean, yeah. everybody needs to be on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. We could break it down real, real simple. I don't you agree, Tim? I mean, we... very, very. In fact, when we get to transit uh, committee again, I'll, uh, the thing I would consider is your, uh, the blue rate that you see. So maybe that should be the rate for anybody if you stay in the yellow zone or if you stay in the red zone. That's, that's the price. But I also think there's a lot to be said about creating that table. You know, how much is it from Lumpton to Rose City to West Branch yeah. to Prescott? And uh, we can pick a few points on the map so that we can have a pretty complete table. Yeah. I think that'll help the drivers too, because yeah. they don't, they'll know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. that's no problem. We have a meeting uh, 18th, the 18th, and we'll. So next time we have this, we'll have it broke down more, and I think we'll be at a point yeah. where we can. The assistant. Transit uh, director position has is did Ray get input on this and see this? Oh yeah, he's uh, so Ray's at every one of our uh, transit committee meetings, and uh, Ray has input on the matter at at all the meetings, and he's been um, very open open to it, and uh, uh, we all agree that it's it's something that we really need to have at this point. I think this is great because obviously he's he's briefly discussed retirement and, and this individual and someone needs to come in and learn this job. But I also seen on the assistant transit director and the transit director position, both uh, were were looking for grants and applying for grants, which I think was a good thing. I seen it listed. Commissioner, yes, oh. uh, I want either you or I could get together with um, with Ray and find out specific destinations and then make the table for that. So, and then we could have it ready by our transit meeting even. Yeah, absolutely. So I can do it or you can do it. Yeah, right? I can, uh, I'll okay. get with Ray and make sure you'll have that for us. Okay. Do you have anything on the trans assistant transit director job description? No, we're just talking about the fees right now. But we're talking with him about. Okay. I wasn't talking about any job description. And we're talking about the assistant Transit director position now. The transit or the assistant transit? The assistant transit director position. So I read over briefly, but uh, I'd have to have time to kind of go and look at it in depth. Does it have anything in there about uh, what we're talking about, the assistant transit? But I guess my, my main concern is that we don't let millages fall through the cracks anymore. So, I mean, what, what part would 
to cover that in these job functions. Well, kind of like uh, Commissioner David said, I mean, both both functions of each the assistant and the director is to they'd be ultimately be working together and accountable to each other for all these grants and deadlines and everything. So. I know, but where does it said that? Um, um, there is a comment. Um, I seen that last night. Oh, if you saw it, then maybe I, I seen it was grants. Both are responsible for. Oh, I see it. I got it. Never mind. It's number four. Sorry, I missed it. Grant opportunities collects data. I guess should millages be be spelled out in here somewhere? No, that's that's spelled out enough. That's grants yeah. annual budget compliance. Yeah, they're um, or, it's just part of their budget, and so this is where that okay. that would, focus would need to be okay. Um, what's your guys' time frame on this? I mean, we're putting together. You guys are putting together a job description, which I thought was very good. But what's your what's your what time frame are you looking at? We'd like to move this forward as soon as possible. What I'd like to see, yes, this position be the training slash the the training officer along this assistant director slash training safety officer that's the one one thing they need over there and i've said this all along is they need somebody in charge of safety over there uh, if it was a driver slash safety officer whatever uh, i've gone i've asked for seven years now and i've talked to ray do you do ride-alongs do you do training what do you do for safety training I don't have time never have time we had time to go on vacation Took a week off. You don't have any other time. You can't ride along with somebody. Of course, we haven't had an accident out there in oh. four years, something we'll like that. There. Well, at least at least that's what we've been told. We haven't had an accident. We had a grievance filed because somebody got terminated, and then we watched the accident on video yep. happen. The commissioners were not not told that there was an accident there. There was damage to that bus until the grievance was filed, you know, and I, I think I think there's a little absence on that too. I'll bet there's been accidents out there, but, you know, and we know that accidents causes deductibles right away, which is a cost, which if there's a cost in this county, the, the commissioner should know about it. That's our job. Agreed. And whether whatever department it is, I don't care if it's whatever department it is. Same with the, any kind of an accident, a slip, trip, or fall, which is the most prominent accident out there. And if it happens in a custodian, we should know about it. That's our job. But I don't think we're always told everything. Well, I think we've really of course they're not lying to us. If they don't tell us, they're not lying, right? Isn't that how that goes? Well, I think we've made leaps and bounds with this this uh raised on a, a very good job with with doing it on his own and, and having no assistance. And now there's a committee and now we're looking at an assistant director position. I mean, he's well, he, I would he just, got a lot on his plate. That's a very big department. Well, I would just say go. that uh, we gotta in, inject more safety into that. I agree. And, and I would my suggestion would be make this this particular position the safety officer position. That's in the, in the job description. That's a valid point. Um, and I think our insurance carrier should definitely uh, be implementing that. Because there's no training over there. There's no training. There's no training in anything that we're doing with vehicles. Ongoing training. We're just saying everybody's just great. They just take care of everything. Everybody's just great. We, you don't have to train anybody. I'd like to add to that. I mean, it's easy for you to say there's no training. Are you out there every day? Do you know? Or are you on the committee? I mean, I'd appreciate I, you asking questions I, instead of just up assuming. Up that. until the direct, up until your committee, I was out there from time to time, and I asked the question over and over again. I'll bet. Then I'll just change my opinion. I'll bet you there isn't any training. Okay. So I, I do agree with you. Um, we do need to have more training. And safety is a very important part of this. And I think that's something obviously we can we can add to this. And I think that needs to be a, 
a function that needs to be more consistent out there. But I think everybody does agree, and Ray would tell you this, and I, I feel some of the employees, I've talked to employees, you know, the, the transit is running stronger and more consistent now than it was definitely last January. So that's a good thing. We do need to look back to the past to find out why things didn't work to fix them, and we're trying to do that. So I do agree with what you brought up, but I really think we are heading in the right direction um, with the transit. Staffing is the issue, and you guys are, are good. Staffing is, a lot, is much better than it was uh, a year ago right now. Yep. They've been staying afloat. I mean, he said that over and over again. Tim, did you have something? I would just suggest that we enhance the text in the essential functions one and three, and we start right out. Number one is the training officer for the department. Number three is the safety officer for the department. And already, like in number three, we're talking about policies related to safety, accident reporting, maintenance, general operations. We just enhance the, the language in both of those to include yeah. that. Yeah, it's there. We just need yeah. an answer, yeah. I think just you got to have meat to it. Mm -hmm. Just doing general. Doing general is saying that if there's complacency, we accept it. If you accept complacency, it'll never get better. If you ex if somebody has got a bad habit, they're not going to fix their bad habit. They may not even know it's bad. Okay. That was that was that grievance when we got that grievance because she got terminated or that person got terminated, I shouldn't say she, um, you know, it was because she communicated over the radio while she was driving. And the video proved that. And, and uh, you know, well, you knew that was happening a lot. It was going on all the time. And they had a policy for it, but nobody was watching. So a bad habit just kept going. We definitely don't want to get back to where our insurance carrier is saying, hey, there's too many. We want to avoid to get to where we were. So this yeah. will help with that. Um, I think that's so keep us keep us informed of that overtime analysis. We've got this on our iPads. We do. Um, first page. OK, mine has failed. I only have one page. Oh, no, I guess I'm sorry. I did not scroll down. Yeah, there's a bunch. Yes, there is. Okay, so that first page is um, consistent with what you've seen in the past, and it's very general by department <clears throat> uh, the overtime stands. When we reviewed this in November, a uh, suggestion was made that we actually add the dollar amount uh, to the overtime and the comp time charges. So you see those columns have been added mm -hmm. here. You not only get the time, but based on the hourly rate of the employee, uh, what the dollar value of that time is. And you'll see that moving forward. Uh, and the other additions are by department, you're seeing two graphs, one, the cumulative total. So you see that obviously would go up uh, throughout the year. And then you see the monthly totals. And this is interesting. If we just look at that first page for uh, the sheriff's office overtime, the red line represents the current fiscal year. And obviously we're well below what the trends were uh, for the last three years. And hopefully that'll continue throughout the year. But the one to me that's more interesting is to look at that bar graph on the bottom because you're looking at the same four-year area, and obviously 24 uh, we're in the process of. But it's just interesting to see where you, where the peaks are uh, for overtime. You see a peak, uh, looks like consistently uh, from November through February, but mainly in that November-December range. And you also see you know, another peak that occurred in June and another one in September. Uh, so it's just an interesting to see, okay, this is where the demand seems to be. The next page is uh, one of our school resource deputies. And because the, the overtime itself is not you know, consistent by every month, you see a lot of flat lines on, on the graph. Uh, and really no trend to speak of because there just isn't the data. Now, I actually was... Um, thinking about um, somehow working in the comp time earned because that, frankly, it's extra hours. So we could do that. I would just have to retitle the graph. It wouldn't be just overtime that you're seeing anymore, but that might help us uh, identify trends. Uh, the other two, though, that are really rich in data, uh, down in corrections, you see, again, the same linear and, and bar graphs. And you can see, again, where we are right now in 24 is below dollar wise what the last three years were but again you see those peaks you see that peak same winter period in the december to january range another peak in june another peak in september 
Um, these are, I think, would be helpful uh, for scheduling. So if I'm a department head and I'm looking at that, I'm going to ask, well, why is this? And you know, maybe try to head some of that off with scheduling. Maybe there's a lot of vacations in those months. Um, who knows? In the winter months, maybe it's sicknesses that happen. I, I don't know, but that, that's maybe a deeper dive the department can do. And then finally, the last one is the road patrol over time that uh, doesn't have quite as much data yet. Uh, um, we only began that um, uh, function in May of 21, but still it'll be interesting to watch where we trend. And again, you see a couple of peaks again, look like they're forming. Um, and you know, particularly in that September, for some reason, we really have a jump. So, yeah, interesting stuff. Um, just to continue to update this every month for you. I know the Law Enforcement Committee will be diving deeper into that later today. Um, that's the report for, for the December numbers. Could you make a graph or um, just with comp time? I can. I definitely can, yes. Comp time has, has to be in included in overtime. It is earned as overtime. It is not paid out as overtime, but it is earned as overtime. It has to be in that. But could you see it separately? Yeah, you can see That's it. So my question you is you can see that in the second spreadsheet and on that the second spreadsheet, no no colors, well they're green and white. You you can see comp time in there. But it is earned as overtime. Right. It is overtime. So when you look at that first spreadsheet on the on the page at all, it that's skewed because they're not earn, they're only showing overtime, paid out overtime. Comp time it's separate. And it's not there. They are working over 40 hours. And and the overtime is not reflecting that. They're working over 40. It's not reflecting that. And but they're getting paid out comp time. So I'll play with this before you see the next graph, but you know, the two thoughts come to mind. Obviously you wanna see comp time, but your, your point being though, comp time is, is additional hours work beyond the 40, beyond the straight time. So it'll be interesting to see the overtime and comp time together. And because we can do that by hour, it, it, it's, you know, it's got the consistent variable and we can show that. And I think that'll give me probably a truer picture of where you know the peaks and valleys are. I was looking back at some other reports. When we set allocations, when we set allocations, we set hourly allocations per week. We set that auto in there, and we even put in in our allocation list. We put in how many days a week that forty hours is split up, or thirty five. It's not up to the department to come up with a new schedule. Yeah, like, like the commissioners, the road commissioners, they set in the spring, they vote to set a four 10 hour shift. 40 hours paid over 10 hours or over, over 10 hours a day for four days. They make that. The employees don't, the, the foremans don't, the commissioners do. And we do the same thing. We allocate a position. We say how many hours a week it's allowed and how many days the week to work that. Uh, to an extent. Well, that's Your what elected I, department will establish the work schedule. All we have control is how much money that individual or that department gets. We don't have control over what you're stating. Oh, no. Allocation. Runs out. Allocations we do. Yeah, allocation. You're, you're allocating... 80 hour pay period, 40 hour work week. And that's where we budget. And we obviously budget lines for overtime too, but that's as far as you go, as far as the board goes. You establish 2,080 hours a year, the elected department head as the co-employer establishes the schedule. Okay. So it might be a Monday through Friday. It might be a Tuesday through Sunday. It might be some other combination, but that elected department head- And then we set the overtime rates too. Well, in I mean, it's we know what the hourly rate is, and we know that over time. Well, I mean, time I mean the, the level of what we can budget for. Right. So you set a dollar amount certain, and that's right. that's it. Okay. Anything else there? I appreciate this. Item six, public comment. Any in the room? Any public comment on the phone? 
Motion to adjourn? Yep. <laughs> Support? Support. Motion adjourned to 10 on 9. Oh. Good day, everyone. Okay. That was crazy. What's up? It's a new year so far. Interesting. Uh, 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 interesting.